Hello Dev, welcome back to Dev Made Easy and your exciting world of web design. Have you ever wondered how to make your website forms more interesting? Today we are going to explore something really cool, form a pull to wave animation. Come along as we discover how to add special movements to your forms that make them fun to use. From general ripes to nice motions, we'll learn how to make your login page more attractive and engaging. Get ready to learn new tricks that will make your website stand out. Stick around to the end and let's have some fun creating awesome animations together. Let's get started. Let's get started by creating our main files, okay? This is a JavaScript project, so we need a markup as always. And let's give it a title here, form, input, wave animation, okay. Let's also have a style, style.css, and our app.js, okay, our script. Let me close this for now. And we need also a link connecting our markup to our CSS, and also our script, okay. I like to put it here in the head, but let me see, okay app.js but let, let's have a defer meaning that the body is gonna run and after that our script okay let's now create a very simple markup okay let's have our main container this div with a class of container let's have a h1 say please login okay or whatever you want to say here and now let's have this div here the form let's say form and inside this form here we're gonna have the let's have a main div okay that's gonna wrap around everything with the class form control. And inside this, we're gonna have our inputs, okay? Let's have this one, type is gonna be text. And let's also say here required, all right? And let's have a label, so you know what this input is for. So label, and in the label here, let's say email, all right? We have just one input, but let me show you what we have so far. Looks like we have just the H1 and also this input. So far we have just an input. Let's just duplicate this one. We have one for email and now we need another one for the password. So let's make a couple of changes here, like type, let's say password. And also here in the label, so the user is going to know that's the place to hit or her put her password okay and underneath this one pay attention okay we need to create a button so that the user can click on it okay let's create a button with the class of btn and in it let's have the text login login okay don't forget to subscribe and also give us a like so the YouTube knows that you like this type of videos, okay? And underneath this one, let's have a paragraph with the class of text, and you see, and in here, let's say, don't have an account. Okay, if I can type, looks like that's not the case. Yeah, I did it. And we also need the anchor tag here, okay? in case of you need to register. So let's have this anchor tag and the anchor tag here is gonna point in nowhere, but of course you can use your all links, all right? And yeah, that's our HTML. Let's have the robot font for Google Fonts and now let's have our CSS reset. But before we have our CSS reset, let me show you why you need a CSS reset. Let's create a border so you can visually see what's going on here. Two pixels, and it's gonna be Re Rebecca purple. Let's have a mean height of 100 VH. And now you, you, you can figure out that you have padding and margin, and we don't need it. So margin is zero, padding zero, and box size is gonna be about a box. And now we are working with our own numbers. 
because as I show you, different browsers has different numbers, okay? So let's quickly move into the body. Let's have a background color, let's say this bluish color, all right? For the text, we want that to be white. Let's use the Google Fonts now, the Roboto, and also as a fallback plan, Sans Serif. We want this content in the middle, so let's use Flexbox. The direction here, we want that to be column. And now we want to put that in the middle, so along the, the cross axis, align at the center. And along the main axis, just find content center. And yeah, that's right in the middle. We also need here a overflow hidden. Now let's grab our container itself, okay, and let's apply a color. Let's say background color, let's give it a black color and a transparency of 30%. Okay, let me just save it so you can see what you have so far. And let's give a padding 20 pixels, 40 pixels. Border radius, let's say. Let's try to make it a little rounder its corners, okay? Let's say 5 pixels. And yeah, looks good. Now we should grab the container H1. Let's try to put that right in the center with text, okay? Text align center. And as you can see, it's very close to the inputs and we don't want that. So let's give a margin border of 30 pixels, put them apart. And yeah, it's starting looking nice, as you can see. All right. Now let's apply some style to our anchor tag here, to our link. Okay, it's very ugly and blue and it does fit our project. Okay, so let's change that. I start by getting rid of this text decoration none, so we don't have that ugly underline. And the color, let's say here, something like light blue. All right, it really fits the project. Going from the top to the bottom, now let's grab the form control, okay? And position is gonna be relative, we're gonna have something absolute to it. Margin is gonna be 20 pixels, top and bottom. 0 left and right and 40 pixels bottom, okay. Let's give a width of 300 pixels. All right, now let's grab the input itself. So let's have here the form control and input. Let's start by change the color here to transparent. Let's also get rid of the border with border 0. We want the border a bottom bottom of two pixels we want that to be white and also solid so we have this line we want that to be block okay so display block and have has the width of 100 percent of its container okay so width is going to be 100 percent let's also i apply a padding of 15 pixels zero let me see the font size, let's increase that to 18 pixels, okay? Let me show you. Okay, but it's black, it, is, it does fit the project, so the color, let's change that to white. Yeah, it's much better this way. All right, and now we wanna get rid of those ugly outlines. Okay, so let's grab the form input on focus and also the input when valid okay once this is done let's say outline and set that to none so now we can click on it and we don't have that ugly outlines following the sequence from top to the bottom now let's grab the button as you can see we have a very ugly button right now a small one so let's grab the button and let's start make it cursor pointer so the user knows he can click on it. 
for the layout here, we want that to be inline block. Let's give a width of 100% of its container. Okay, as you can see, much bigger. The background, let's say light blue, it fits the rest of the project. The padding is going to be 15 pixels all the way around for family inherit. Okay, let me see what else. The font size, let's say 16 pixels. We also want the body radius to be oh, no body at all. And the body radius to make it rounded the corners, let's say also 5 pixels. Okay. Continuing with our button, let's grab it. And when it, it is in focus, let's get rid of outline. In this project, we are enemies of outline, so outline is going to be done. And let's try to make it a little bit interactive. So every time this is active, when someone clicks on it, let's scale it down to .98. Let me show you here. Okay, we have this nice effect showing that you're click on it. I'm wearing glasses right now, but I can see that the text and the button are too close. Okay. So let's fix that. So let's grab the text and let's add a margin top, let's say 30 pixels. 30 pixels is good for me. Let me give a save because until now it's the same. Okay, and now we have some space in between them. We have now this weird position of the label, so let's let's fix that right now. Okay. Right here. You can see well. Form control label. We want the position to be absolute. Absolute to the form control. Okay. This way we can manipulate its position. So let's say from the top is going to be 15 pixels and from the left is going to be zero pixels. And let me show you. Looks like we have a problem here. When we type, we type on it, but we are going to make it goes up every time it's active. Okay. And now let's give you life to our project. Okay. Let's have this constant labels. Let's select the form control, all the labels that you have in our project. All right. Let's loop through the labels and grab the label and have this error function. And let's set the wherever inner HTML is to the letter, the inner text. Okay. And now we want to split it. So every letter A M A I L. And the next step here, let's grab the in the map, let's grab the letter and also the index. And do we want to put every letter in a spam. So let's use backtick, spam. Let's close it for now. And in here, let's grab whatever letter we have. So all the letters are going to be in a different spam. And let's join in the word again. And let me show you the result here. So you can see A, M, a I L. So each one of them is in a different spam. Okay. Now that you have spams, we can apply same styles to it, right? That's the right sequence of doing things here. So now let's grab the form control label and spam, and we want to style it. Let's start by changing the layout. The display here, we want that to be line block. We also want the font size to be increased to 18 pixels. Let's give a width of, let's say, 5 pixels. And we also want, let me say here, let's now do minor changes here just to make it look better. Let's grab the form control import when it's focus and let's change the uh, label, the label spam. 
when this is in focus and also when this is active, okay? The idea here is change the color of it, okay? First the label and then the line. The color we want that to be light blue, like most of the components in this project. Let me show you. Okay, light blue. That's beautiful. And now we want this line also to be light blue. So let's look for it down up here. Okay. Underneath here, the outline none. Let's say border bottom column to light blue. And let's check it. Let's test it. Let me see. Okay, now both of them I light blue, the label and also the line. It works fine. And the second thing we want to happen when those are active is grab the label and put it up. We do that with the negative number here on translate in y direction. So minus 30. Let me show you. Oops, that's right. Okay, it's working. But it's not beautiful. We need some transition, okay, to look more normal. Take a look at this. So let's go up here on the label span. Let's up apply a transition with dot three seconds. Cubcubilzer dot six eight minus dot five five dot two six five. We want to create an effect like this bouncing. Let me show you. Okay, just like that. And so let's apply this to every letter. Okay, not the full name. All right, this part is done. And now let's apply the style or effects to each individual letter. Okay, let's have here in this panel the style transition delay based on the index of each letter okay so let's have here the index of it and let's multiply by 50 by 30 by 10 wherever you like the most in my case by 50 is okay let me show you what you have so far let me click here okay and now we have this different effect and it's amazing as you can see so that's it for today devs i really hope you like it if you like it smash that like and subscribe button and as always i will see you next week